Well, hey there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Arise with Amber. Thank you guys so much for coming back and for joining me every week. I absolutely love creating these Arises for you. And I'm not gonna lie, sometimes it is a little stressful, especially when it comes out on Sunday and I'm trying to write and get it all edited throughout the week. But I have just loved being able to dive into scripture and study and learn. And it is, you know, as I said at the conference this past weekend, I did a conference in Ohio. I went there to be an encouragement to people and I left feeling encouraged. And I'll talk about that in a second, but I come to bring you guys encouragement. I started Arise to show you that no matter what you face in this life, no matter what life throws your way or God entrusts you with, that you can arise. So I come here to give you guys encouragement, but As I study God's word, I am encouraged and I am fed and I am nourished. So I pray that these arises are an encouragement to you. I pray that something that I say makes you want to seek Jesus. And I pray most of all that you know that this life is hard, but God is so good. And I pray that you seek him. Let's pray and then we'll get started. Jesus, thank you as always for the gift of another day to walk with you, God. It is not lost on us that you woke us up today, that we have breath in our lungs. And that gives us an opportunity, another opportunity yet again to serve you, to know you. God, we know that this life is a vapor and it is so short and there is an urgency to know your word, to to know you, for you to know us. And As I said, this life is so short, God, and there's not that much time. We don't know what will happen tomorrow, so we must seek you today. And I pray that whoever is here, that you have placed from around the world to hear, to listen to your word. I thank you for them, first of all, but I pray that they know that there is an urgency, that you are drawing them in, and there is an urgency to go deeper with you. I know that you know what everyone is going through who is listening, God. Pray that you draw near to them, give them your peace, your comfort, your grace, most of all your presence. I pray that I decrease God every day as you increase. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right. I was able to go with Granger to Ohio this past weekend, and we were able to speak at Adventure Church, and it was such a blessing. I spoke at a women's conference there, and it was called Echo. And my message was all about the call that we have from God and then the echo that we need to be putting out into the world, echoing God's heart for a lost and broken world. And I'll have the whole whole message posted on my channel. There were some audio issues in the beginning. I think the first few minutes, somebody left their mic on, so it sounds like I'm talking in a very busy room. But that'll fade out as the message goes on, so... It'll be on my website, I believe, at arisewithamber.com, and if not, it'll definitely be on my Arise with Amber YouTube channel, so you guys can check that out. I, I don't know if it'll be uploaded to podcast. I'll have to ask Paul about that, um, but I will get back to you on that maybe next week. So as I said, I want to be an encouragement to people. I went to go encourage people through suffering and share my testimony and share my story, and I left feeling so encouraged there was just the presence of God in that room and and just the fellowship with the ladies was incredible. The staff at Adventure Church was great. So I left just so full and I'm so grateful for that. But I want to tackle a question today that, so this whole message is just on one question. I get this message so often in my socials and in, in my DMs and my messages and my emails. And the question is, how do I get closer to God? I get asked that so much. And for someone to say, how do I get closer? Closer means it makes me assume that you already know God. It makes me assume that you already know who he is. I could be wrong, but in order to get closer to God, we must already have faith and trust in Jesus's finished work on the cross. We must already know that God became flesh and dwelt among us, and he came to seek and save the lost, and we are those lost. We are sinners in need of a Savior, and God made a way through Jesus. He took the wrath that we deserve. He stepped down from glory to take our place, to be the substitute for our sin, 
Our sins are what nailed him to the cross. And he did that because he loved us so much. And he knew that we couldn't do it. So he sent his only son out of his deep love for us to become our substitute on the cross so that we could be made right, so that we could be reconciled to God, and so that we could be made righteous by his blood. And it's the most special gift that we've ever been given. But it comes with a price. Those who have faith in Jesus, those who believe in his finished work, we were bought for a price. We were bought by his blood, and we are no longer our own. So first, to get closer to God means that we have to have faith in that. We have to have belief that Jesus is who he is in the scriptures, that he did what he said he would do, and that he is coming back to finish the rest. He was raised on the third day at the, during the resurrection, and we are waiting for his second coming. And he is coming back to judge the whole world. So faith first has to be, your faith first has to be there before you can get closer to God. In Hebrews eleven six it says, And without faith it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So you're not going to get closer to God if you don't believe at all, if you don't have faith in Jesus. But if you do, for those who repent and believe, Stephen Lawson sums it up perfectly. He says, if you want to be close to God, the word needs to be close to you. And that's it. That is so true. If you want to get close to God, if you want to get closer to the Lord, his word needs to be close to you. You need to dust off your Bible. If you don't have one, you need to go buy one. You can buy one on Amazon. We have smartphones now. It's right on your phone. Download it. Purchase your first one ever. Pray before you open it for him to come near, for God to open your eyes to his word, to his truth. And if you already have your Bible, if you, most of us, I'm sure most of us in this country have a Bible. It's probably sitting on a shelf. We probably put it away. We probably tried to read it so many times like I did. John Piper says to swim in it, swim in it. He says, God's word is like an ocean and we need to be swimming in it. We need to not just be dipping our toes in here and there and getting little pieces of it here and there on a coffee mug or a t-shirt or a devotional. We need to be going swimming in the ocean that is God's word. And he says one gem from this ocean is worth all of the pebbles in the earthly streams. And it's so true. I tried to read my Bible so many times and I just always put it down. I never finished. I never stayed consistent. And there's a few reasons why I think that that happened to me. I can only speak from, from me. But I didn't have saving faith in Jesus at that time. I didn't pray before I opened it. I think I was just trying to read it because I thought, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. I didn't have a desire to do it. I didn't have a desire to truly know who God was. I didn't have a plan going in. I, I wasn't consistent and I gave up. So I think those are some of the things that might be affecting your reading of the Bible. I know that that was it for me. So how do you get closer to anything in your life? How do you get closer to someone? You build a relationship. You seek them. You pursue them. You spend time with them. You get to know them. It's the same thing with God. It's the same thing with God. He's the closest relationship that you will ever have. If you're a believer, he lives inside of you. So we have to seek him. We have to we have to read his word. We have to put in the work. And sometimes it is work. Sometimes it's work to have to get up and open your Bible. And, and we talked about desire and devotion a few arises ago. And sometimes it starts as discipline. But that discipline becomes a desire that later becomes devotion. And that's with any relationship in your life. Are you really seeking to know God? Or are you just thinking this is what you're supposed to do? Or are you seeking the benefits on earth, this side of heaven? So are you really seeking to know God? Or are you just seeking the benefits this side of heaven? Because he will blow your mind. The God of scripture will blow your mind. You guys, he is so incredible. He is so incredible. And we need to stop being fed by everything in the world and begin to be fed by God's word. Because it is so rich, it is so full, it is so life-giving. 
He will blow your mind, and he reveals himself in his word. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word is God. He is speaking to you every single day. He's sitting there, <clears throat> probably on a shelf, waiting for you to open up the goodness that is his word. And I currently do the McShane plan. It's M apostrophe C-H-E-Y-N-E. It's the plan that I've stuck with the most out of, out of any plan that I've done. I've done it consistently for two years, and it is very doable. You read from four different books every day. You can do a quick Google search for it, or you can find it in the Bible app. I used to be what I call a devotional junkie. <laughs> I would read multiple devotionals a day. I mean, I'm talking like eight to 10. I would have them all out, have my coffee. I would, I would be thinking that I was getting so much goodness of God's word, but I wasn't reading my Bible. And I would get little pieces here and there and little verses to make me feel better and, you know, help me throughout my day. But I wasn't, I wasn't going to God's word. I wasn't hearing what he was saying to me. You know, you have to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation to get the whole story. And I think so many of us cherry pick little verses here and there. And a lot of times verses are taken way out of context. You have to know what is said before and what and after. And many times in the books before to see what was leading up to that or what is to come. It's just a treasure. It's just a treasure. And I just encourage you to pick it up and open it and read it because he's speaking to you. I definitely <clears throat> wasn't learning what God called me to do by just reading devotionals. I wasn't being obedient to his word. I was just trying to get a little piece of goodness to help me and make me feel better for what I was going through in my life. And devotions can be a good addition. They can be a great addition. I love devotionals. But the Bible has to be your source. The Bible has to be your main source. It is nourishment to your soul. It is your living water. It is your daily bread. So if you get anything from this, pick up your Bible. Pray before you open it. Pray for the Lord to, to reveal things to you. And then dive in. Dive in. Don't give up when things get hard. There are certain books in the Bible that are hard to understand. Um, but along with the Bible, to help you understand, you can add things to your reading of the Bible. You can add sermons and podcasts and Bible plans and Bible studies, and those can all help to aid you. You can ask wise counsel to help you, you know, understand the text. But this is if they align with scripture. You can't have all these additions. If they, if they go against what God's word says, they are false. You can't have an extra book that somebody made up if it doesn't go along with scripture, if it doesn't align with scripture. And the only way to know if it aligns is to read the word. So that's what I've learned in, in, my, in my studies and in my walk with the Lord is his word is the source. He is, he is God. He is the word and he is speaking every day through his word. Anything else I get, I test it against the word. I see if it aligns and if it does, I take it in. It helps me understand. I would also say to be patient and have grace. Because as I said, as a new reader, a lot of it will be hard to understand. There are some things in there that you're like, what, what is that? <laughs> what did I just read? How could, that have, how could that have happened? How could God have allowed that? But when you get to know the character of God and you know that he is good all the time, it makes sense. When all the stories start aligning together, it's the most beautiful book you will ever read. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. Continually ask for wisdom. I ask God all the time, God, please impart wisdom to me. I don't understand what this says. Help me to understand. And James 1, 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. Honestly, joining Bible studies really helped me um, in the beginning in my walk and they still help me today. It allowed me to not only go deeper into the text and to learn about you know, a specific book but it allowed me to ask others questions. It allowed us to have fellowship and to have a conversation and to confirm or rebuke each other in, in certain things that were true or not true. And if they did or didn't align with scripture, it challenged me to go deeper. It challenged us in, in fellowship and it helps, it helps to sharpen you. You know, iron sharpens iron. And, and when we go to Bible studies with each other, especially, you know, if you're with other people who are more mature in the faith. And that doesn't have to mean by age. You know, there could be somebody younger than me who's way more mature than I am in the faith. 
And that takes a humble heart to say, I want to learn from you. I don't care that you're 20 years my junior. You're so wise. I want to know what you know and how you know it. So seek Bible studies, seek wise counsel, seek people that are more mature in the faith, ask your pastors. Um, Another way that we can gain intimacy with our Lord is by seeking him in prayer. And this is big. The Bible speaks so much about prayer. And the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians to pray without ceasing. If we pray without ceasing, we are in constant relationship, constant closeness with God. And I know it says, be continually in prayer. Not everybody can pray 24-7. I know. I get that. We all have jobs and mom duties and, and work and, and just life, busyness, kids. But you can pray any time that you physically can. That's when you're doing the dishes, doing the laundry, laying your kids down to bed, in your car, Whenever you can, be in prayer with God, be in communion with God, and not only asking him for things, but praising, praising his goodness. If something good happened to you today, or if, or if one of your friends was healed, praise him, praise him, talk to him. (laughs) He wants to be in relationship with us. You can talk to him like a father. You know, we cry out, Abba, father. He is our father. He is our creator. We can cry out to him. We can talk to him any time of our day. And I know some people feel uncomfortable in prayer. The more you do it, the more comfortable you get. You just have to just have to say what's on your mind and your heart. And he is so good to listen. He hears the prayers of the righteous. So I think it's amazing that we're invited to the throne of grace to offer up our prayers and just to speak with him. What an honor that is, that he comes close to us when we express ourselves to him, when we ask him for things, when we give him our thoughts and our, our, our fears and our anxieties and our wants. He wants to hear all of those things. So be continually in prayer. We cannot be intimate with Jesus if we are disobedient to his word. We can gain intimacy. We can get closer to God if we become obedient to his word. I know that we're all sinners. I know that we will struggle with sin this side of heaven. But you can't have a close and intimate relationship with God if you are actively living in sin. It's just they don't go hand in hand. They don't go together. The Bible says that he is far from the wicked. He requires our obedience. And if we have genuine faith, faith that is built on the rock and not built on sand, our obedience will be evidence of that. It shows our love for him and it demonstrates our faith and it glorifies him ultimately. 1 John 2, 3 says, And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. So you can know if you know him if you keep his commandments. As I said, we make mistakes. We still sin, but we realize it. We, we are convicted of it and we repent. We repent and we say, God, I'm... I struggle with this. I struggle with this. I struggle with impatience. I struggle with anger. I struggle with pornography. I struggle, you know, whatever you struggle with, take it to God. Take it to God. Confess it. Confess it. Because when stuff is brought to the light, the enemy cannot have a hold over it any longer. So confess it. Psalm 128.1 says, Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. So we're called to be obedient. We're called to, to fear him and we're called to walk in his ways. And the only way we know what his ways are is if we read the word. John 14, 21 says, Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. He who loves me will keep my commandments. It is shown to him that we love him by keeping the commandments. And it says, he will be loved by my father. So our Father, He loves us. You were created in His image. You were knit together in your mother's room for such a time as this. He already loves us. But we show His love. We show our love for Him by seeking Him, by reading His word, by praying, and by being obedient to what He calls us to do. So lastly, we can gain intimacy in suffering. And I know that sounds weird, and we don't want or desire any of that. We don't want to suffer But suffering brings us to the feet of Jesus. Suffering brings us closer. It awakens our need for him. It it shows us just how small we truly are. 
just how depraved we are and that we need him and we have to surrender to him. And when we still praise through the pain with surrendered open hands, he gets the glory and we gain intimacy with him because he is so close to the brokenhearted. He comes to us. He comes near when we cry to him. Sometimes we might not feel it in that moment, but you can be sure he is faithful and he is good and he is working and you get to know your Lord on a much deeper level. We get to see his faithfulness and his goodness on display in our situation. And many times you, you might not feel it right in the moment. Many times you do, but many times you might not feel it right in the moment, but you look back after you praise through that storm and you say, God, thank you for what you brought me through. I didn't see it then, but I see it now. And you were with me the entire time. So to sum it up, ways that we get closer to Christ. We believe by faith. We read our word. We are constant in prayer. We are obedient to what he calls us to do. And we live with surrender and suffering. So those are just some of the ways that I feel that we can get closer to God. I know there, I'm sure there are many more ways. I mean, there's all kinds of worship and, and so many ways that you can draw near to the feet of Jesus. Being in church, being in his house. Um, comment below. Let me know your thoughts. How do you, how do you draw near to the Lord? What do you do in your daily routine? I absolutely love swimming in God's word and I crave it. And nothing beats true intimacy with Jesus. Nothing. No relationship in your life will fulfill you like Jesus will. Not your husband, not your wife, not your kids, not your job, not your church. Nothing will fulfill you like your relationship with Christ. So he desires to know you. He calls, he seeks, he knocks, he is drawing you, but it's up to you to go deeper. Don't just tip, dip your toes in, as John Piper says, go all in and swim in that treasure of an ocean. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And these are God, this is, this is God's word. So you can know that it's true. You can hang on these promises. You can pray these promises. God, your word says, if I draw near to you, you will draw near to me. Draw near to me. I need you right now in this moment. Guys, I can only point you to him. And I hope that's what I do on Arise is to point you to him. I can only share the good news and I can only plant these seeds and, and pray that they fall on good soil, that they take root and that they bear fruit. And I pray that for you today. I pray for you to know God as he is revealed in his word, not as the world says that he is, as he is revealed in scripture. Pastor Kyle at Adventure Church this weekend said, if you seek God and live your life with open hands, surrendered to his will, it will be the greatest adventure of your life. And that's so true. It'll be the greatest adventure you've ever been on. And that doesn't mean that there won't be valleys. There will be valleys on any adventure. There's ups and downs. We're called to those. But he will do exceedingly, abundantly more than you could ever imagine. Than you could ever imagine. You are chosen, guys. Dust off that Bible. Pick it up. Get yourself to church. Hit your knees in prayer, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much for joining me. You can find me at arisewithamber.com. My Instagram is at Amber Emily Smith. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.